the Cisco Silicon One ASIC architecture. In previous videos for this series, we covered an overview of Silicon One as the newest Cisco ASIC architecture options for Nexus 9000 switches. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain how switch architecture allows switches to share a common set of blocks working together to create a common architecture that can be implemented anywhere in the network. One unified Silicon One SDK, large and fully shared on die packet buffer, high performance, low power, large scale, programmable forwarding engines, advanced features like tunnel termination and generation, ingress and egress access control list, and network address translations, all at line rate. Advanced high scale traffic management, advanced telemetry features. Let's start with performance and efficiency. Silicon One offers a fully unified architecture that delivers consistency in features, services, and telemetry across different industries and customer sizes, including service providers, web scale, and enterprise organizations. While preserving best of breed functions, Simply changing the software configuration between modes provide the same ASIC to adapt to different environments such as campus, packet core, and data center, as well as a diverse range of business needs. Typically, bandwidth, scale, cost, and power drive the ASIC model implemented in each device or component. For example, Silicon One ASIC models can be based on form factor, such as fixed topograph switches or modular chassis, roll, including leaf and spine, core aggregation, router, L2 switch, and many more, and element functionality, including line cards, fabric models, and other elements. This allows Cisco and its customers to flexibly develop features and behaviors based on the size and role of their system. With this in mind, the P100, Q200, Q201, Q202, and Q100 devices are well suited for high scale deep buffer routing deployments. Web scale and data center interconnect. Web scale and service provider core, web scaled and service provider peering, campus edge, campus core. While the G200, G202, G100, Q200L, Q211L, Q201L, and Q202L are optimized for web scale data center switching applications focused on highly efficient Ethernet switching. Web scale top of rack, web scale leaf, web scale and enterprise spine. Let's take a look into Q200 and Q200L for instance. The Cisco Silicon One Q200 ASIC is a 12 data terabits per second full duplex routing processor with deep buffers, while the Q200L is a 12 data terabits per second full duplex switching processor. These processors can be configured in one of the following modes. Q200, 12.8 terabits per second, full duplex standalone routing processor with deep buffers. 6.4 terabits per second, full duplex line card routing processors with deep buffers. Q200L, 12.8 terabits per second, full duplex standalone switching processor. 12.8 terabits per second, full duplex fabric element. 6.4 terabits per second full duplex line card switching processor. And just as these two models, all the different Silicon One ASICs may suit a different need based on routing or switching capabilities. What are some of the use cases you might be wondering? And this is where another characteristic of the Silicon One architecture becomes relevant. Larger scale. In large scale high performance compute environments, AI ML network operators were forced to develop two incompatible isolated networks. With Cisco Silicon One technology, our customers can deploy one network and evolve their choices over time, while maintaining maximum interoperability and performance. 
Moving on with the list of Silicon One characteristics, let's talk about deeper buffers and their benefits. Nobody can argue that the fastest way to transmit a packet is to avoid any intermediate processing or buffering. However, there might be times when regulation of data transfer rates between senders and receivers might be needed. Buffers allow senders to transmit data at a faster rate while receivers process data in their own pace. This is useful upon congestion, especially when traffic nature may require lossless communication. However, it creates contention between memory and bandwidth resources. This ever-increasing gap between the bandwidth of memories and network devices led the industry to create two types of devices, high bandwidth switches with small buffers and low bandwidth routers with large buffers. In 2013, high bandwidth memory, HBM, was a technology that allowed high bandwidth switches to be equipped with deep buffering traditionally only available on much lower bandwidth systems. The HBM physical interfaces uses 2.5D packaging technology to allow the interconnect between the main ASIC die and the memory without having to route very large number of signals across a printed circuit board, saving critical routing resources and power. These HBM devices offer capacities that are more than 100x greater than the internal on-die SRAM. However, even with HBM devices, the memory bandwidth is still lower than the switch bandwidth, and as a result, the access to the HBM must be carefully managed. The Silicon One architecture employs a hybrid buffer schema that benefits from both worlds, internal memory bandwidth and external memory size. With efficient usage and a smart management of the HBM interface, it helps enable the unification of both high bandwidth switching and routing in a single device, as demonstrated by our Q200, a 12.8 terabits per second router with 8 gigabits of buffer in HBM. Traditional architectures use external memories as the device main memory by immediately buffering all incoming traffic in memory. All incoming packets, regardless of output port congestion state, are written to this memory. When a port is ready for transmission, the packets are read from the memory and sent to the output port. To compensate for the read latency from the external memory and avoid underrun, the device incorporates a small internal memory as a prefetch buffer. Therefore, as not all incoming traffic can be written and read from the external memory, the traditional approach is not viable anymore. Buffers in routers and switches aren't designed to absorb constant oversubscription, and in fact, any buffering schema under persistent oversubscription will be forced to drop packets. The buffering allows network equipment to ride through burns of oversubscripted traffic without dropping packets, or intelligently determining which packets to drop first. What is the solution? If we could identify the flows that contributes to the oversubscription, we could buffer only these flows into the external memory. When the transient oversubscription is finished, the flows return from the external memory to use only the internal memory. This approach, adopted by Cisco Silicon One, is called hybrid memory architecture. We provide a set of pre-configured parameters suitable for most applications. However, customers can use the provided APIs to tune and adjust these parameters to better match their application needs. As you might imagine, this has a direct impact in the overall performance of network devices as well which take me to the next characteristic of Silicon One's architecture, high performance. There are many pieces of routing silicon available on the market today from both third-party providers and systems companies. At the time of the recording of this video, with Silicon One, we can build a 12.8 terabits per second router with a single piece of routing silicon. 
While with other devices, you can only build a lower scale 7.2 terabits per second systems or a high scale 6.4 terabits per second systems with external lookup engines. And this will only get better and faster as technology progresses. To achieve higher bandwidth, others need to use two devices connected in a back-to-back -back configuration, which can more than double the latency, cost, power, and rack units, magnifying the benefits of Cisco Silicon One and demonstrating how advanced our architecture is. A consequence of having back-to-back -back devices is that packets need to travel over multiple hubs as they traverse from an input port to an output port. As packets arrive at the ingress device, they must be routed over serialized deserialized to the egress device, adding significant additional latency. With Cisco Silicon One, the packets are switched locally within a device without ever going to another device. This means that Cisco Silicon One can forward packet with less than one half of latency of other solutions. Programmability. Cisco Silicon One offers a single unified architecture with common semantics, so the software development kit and P4 forward wind code can be deployed across the entire data center. What is P4? P4 is a domain-specific programming language used to describe how a programmable forwarding hardware processes packets, which can be an ASIC, a FPGA, or a NIC, and so on. The meaning of P4 is programming protocol independent packet processors. With other architectures, three or four unique silicon architectures are needed, thereby increasing operational complexity. For SDK, we have APIs provided in both C++ and Python. Configurability via high-level networking objects. Distribution-independent Linux packaging. CPU packet I.O. through native Linux network interfaces, and more. P4 leverages an open source programming language to enable customers to define their own features. And this is how it works. Application development is handled by a P4 based IDE programming environment. At compilation, the P4 application generates low level register memory access APIs and high level SDK application APIs provides application support for a wide range of data center, service provider, and enterprise protocols. Modifications to the provided applications can be easily accomplished using the provided P4 development environment. Ability to develop the SDK and applications running over the SDK over a simulated Cisco Silicon One device. Due to Silicon One's extensible P4 programming toolkit, we are always adding features to new customer requirements. Some of the features that are currently available with the P4 code are 